So I got a call him up, guys, about Florida State and them losing to Georgia Tech. And it's a warning sign I've always given you guys, which is this. This validates my decision, my feeling that Tennessee was right to back out of the Army game. Scheduling gimmicky opponents to lesser teams that could beat you is dangerous on its own. It is crazy to schedule them in Ireland. I think Florida State would have been better off scheduling Georgia Tech at Georgia Tech rather than going to Ireland to face a team that returns all of its starters on defense while you're breaking in a new offense. And this is why I said with Tennessee, don't ske- – one of my biggest pet peeves with Tennessee over the years has been when they schedule service academies that are very disciplined and run the triple option. You can mess up your whole season playing those games even when you win. And my okay. rule is just run from them. You were right. You're not anymore. That notion's antiquated. Because now you can still make the college football playoff, which is why the regular season is more interesting. You could lose to one of those service academies, plus it gives back to our military because they're the paid opponents that come in to your stadium like Chattanooga will and they cash a check for like $850,000. Now, I'm not saying our military needs the money, but Have I you am seen our saying, defense budget? I know, I, but I am also saying that those young men get an awful lot of exposure. So I liked seeing Tennessee playing the service academies. And if you don't want to play a triple option team like Georgia Tech used to be back in the day, I understand that argument. But playing the service academies to me is something special, especially considering that Tennessee lost four of its current players in World War II, and that's why their numbers are retired. So to me, and the volunteer moniker, comes from volunteering for military service. So you got me if you're Georgia, if you're anybody else, if you're Miami, but Tennessee, I believe, has always had a strong attachment. They played the service academies before, and I think it helps them and their exposure. So I'm all up for scheduling those guys. And I think Tennessee is going to be so talented, they're not going to lose to them. I think it doesn't matter if they lose. See, the thing with – Florida State over the weekend, even if Florida State had won. Okay, Dave, think about this. The trip to Ireland, you know how me and you said on Friday that was going to be a sloppy game, right? Being oh, in yeah. the game in Bu- Dublin. And I, and I knew what, and I, I felt this firmly. One team would treat it more like a business trip than the other, and that was Georgia Tech. Had it been flip flop, Florida State has a more talented roster, they would have won by 30, right? Exactly. Exactly. Florida State was excited to go to Ireland. Whee! And let's have yeah. some Guinness. Exactly. And you're right. It was a business trip and Georgia Tech treated it as such. And they win. The the problem with these type of games, if you're Florida State there or if you're Tennessee playing a service academy, it's not just if you win or lose. You mentally drain yourself and also physically drain yourself. The worst decision Tennessee ever made. And I believe they call themselves a national championship, Dave. And you can think I'm crazy on this. The year David Cutcliffe came back. In 2006, I thought they had a national title caliber team after that season opening win over Cal, where they jumped up to a 35 to nothing lead. They decided it was a good idea to play a service academy the next week before Florida, sandwiched between two top 10 teams playing Air Force. They have to, on the fly, prepare for the triple option. They weren't ready. They almost lose that game. They win 31 to 30, but most importantly, in the fight of trying to win that game, Inky Johnson suffers a career-ending injury, and they lose Justin Harrell for the year from a torn bicep in his muscle. If those two kids stay on that team, Dave, Tennessee beats Florida the next week. They lost 21 to 20. And they may go out and win the national title. I don't think those injuries had any. Those two injuries, though, could have happened against Georgia Tech, and they could have happened against anybody. Um, And I hate what happened to Inky because that affected the rest of his life. But you're talking about – a guy that he went up against that is not physically more gifted than him. I hate to tell you, but a lot of the receivers that he went up against were more physically gifted in terms of size. So I would actually argue that his terrible, terrible injury and uh, prayers to him as he continues to be an incredible speaker and awesome man, it was as apt to happen against a more athletic SEC team as a service academy. I don't know. It wasn't connection. And because it was, it was the play. 
that that type of play doesn't happen against a regular SEC team, which is that Air Force was so committed to the triple option. What they tried to do is they catch you off guard with the pass every now and then, and that was a floater down the sideline. And Inky Johnson, focusing, shifting to his right, focused on the triple option, gets caught, and there's that pass coming, and he's trying to close to finish the play, and he's going full speed ahead, trying to close to finish the play. He's not having to close out at that level of speed if he's playing in an SEC program because he's not as focused and worried about the triple option and trying to stop that. So okay. it was the play that led to the injury more than it was the physicality of the player he was trying to tackle. Okay, we, let's let's agree to disagree on that because I think play action could have done the same thing, but I, I respect your opinion. Um, then what about NC State? In a game in Charlotte, um, is that gimmicky? Is that something that Tennessee should have scheduled? No, because Tennessee was right. Re- Charlotte is the East Coast time. It's in North Carolina. Nothing is going to throw Tennessee off playing that game at all. You're not going to be th- – if they played him in Ireland, I'd be like, what the heck are you doing playing in Ireland? Okay, well, so whoa, 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 you lost me. So you don't have a problem with the NC State game. I thought you no, said – No, I don't. Okay. I have – Okay, let me, here's why I have a problem with the NC State game is I will argue that outside of your conference, you should play the biggest cream puffs in the history of man because you've got a college football playoff and you can get in it. So I wouldn't play – any mid-ranked team that could upset you. I also would argue this, that you're already recruiting well in Charlotte. All you can do is go there and hurt your recruiting if you don't show up. I think the NC State game in Charlotte is worse than any service academy in Neyland. Here's the problem, Dave, though. you Actually, you need to play. Uh, you need a better schedule strength um, more now with the college football playoff than you did when it was four teams or two teams. Because fourteen to two teams records were so, like too long. It was a, it was effectively double elimination, right? Didn't matter if your schedule was tough or easy. If you lose two games, you're out. Unless you're LSU 07. Um, Tennessee has a very weak SEC schedule this year. They need some. If it comes down to them and another SEC team that are both nine and three, ten and two ish, they need something to boost their schedule strength, and that's what NC State does. And as Dylan points out, NC State's not a gimmicky opponent. Like again, a service no. academy is a gimmicky opponent, and it's a gimmicky game. Let me let me it, change yeah. what I Okay, but that, I don't even think that's a gimmicky game. It's in a neutral site between two regular good football teams. That like it's again gimmicky is going to Ireland for a conference no. game. No. Gimmicky is playing a triple option team in their non-conference. Those are gimmicky, but playing a good Power Five team, I guess now Power Four. On a neutral site, that's what Tennessee's done its whole history in football. I I, I think it's incredibly gimmicky. I I, I mean, uh, I mean, to, there's no tradition. I kind of understood the battle at Bristol because if you ever go, I don't know how much time you spent in the Tri Cities, but it's like you're either a Virginia Tech fan or you're a Tennessee fan. So there's kind of a rivalry there, even though they barely ever played. So that at least mm-hmm. made some sense. The NC State thing doesn't make any sense. I mean, I, I I knew when was that game scheduled? Two, three years ago? Maybe you can check me on that. But you 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 know that Dave Doran may not be the greatest coach in the world, but he's at least solid. So you're going to face a decent opponent. You give away a home game. It just doesn't make any sense to you me. Help, I think you help yourself because it's another quality win if you win. You got to get quality wins on your resume now in this college football playoff era. In this 12-team playoff, you they're going to value schedule strength heavily. And, Dave, if Tennessee played a cream puff team, then if Tennessee's 10-2 and two in the SEC, you talk about Bama a couple of years ago, they would favor a 9-3 and three Bama over a 10-2 to two Tennessee. Well, so you, I, you know, what did, what did Pitt finish in 2022? That didn't help them at all. I don't think that, that – that didn't help them. No, it didn't. It didn't. But also, I think they when they scheduled Pitt, there was an assumption that they were going to be much better than they were. But at the same time, I think Pitt helped them in terms of coming together as a, as a unit. I They're not beating Alabama if they don't have that close Pitt win. I totally agree with that. As it played out, it wasn't a gimmick. But it felt like a gimmick going in. Uh, on our poll question, uh, before we get to Hooker's Corner, who are you the most concerned about other than Georgia and Tennessee's football schedule? Alabama, 46%. Oklahoma on the road, though, 36%. Florida, 16%. Kentucky, 2%. Do you have any objection to where our uh, listeners slash viewers have those games projected? 
I have a major objection to the two percent that pick Kentucky. <laughs> well, I can just meet in a parking lot. There's probably a couple of people trying to be silly. 